Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And I'm first going to mention the new setup. I'm trying something different. I'm in a rolly chair, so that's fun. If you don't know, I always stand when I film, so that's kind of exhausting because filming takes about an hour. So, the new setup. This is it. <laughs> that was awkward. And firstly, I am going to start off with a book. Uh, a book that I don't physically have with me. So I read Confess by Colleen Hoover. Um, the book is in my car, which which is up north. My father took my car because I have the best uh, mileage with that car and the book's in the car, but this is my time to film, so I don't have it with me. But I read this book, I loved it so much, and yeah, it's easily one of my favorites of Colleen's. Uh, I, even, I like it more than Ugly Love, actually a lot more than Ugly Love. And I don't know, I'm a sucker for anything that is art, so maybe that's why, I don't know. But I don't want to give like too much of a summary, but uh, expect a book review to come up on that in March when it comes out. Now this next thing is something that many of you who either know me on a personal level or have been subscribed for a while, um, you know I hate owls, like with a passion. They stare into your soul and they have big eyes that watch you and I just, I don't like them. <laughs> but I was at Target with Corey and we were in the Valentine's section, like, mocking it because we both hate that holiday. Anyway, there were a bunch of, like, these stuffed creatures and I wanted to go and mock the monkeys. And while I was there, I saw this owl. Do you see what this thing looks like? <laughs> it is the most non-threatening owl I have ever seen in my life. And I took him home with me. Like, what is with your eyes? Like, that's scary. That's not scary. <laughs> His name is Cuckoo, like a cuckoo clock. Um, he's, he's special, he's special. I don't, I just, yeah, I love the defects. My next favorite is another really random thing. I have a bay window in my room and it gets really bright. It's westward facing, is that right? Wherever the sun rises, is that's where my window is facing. That's west. East, rises in the east, sets, wait. Rise in the west, sets in the east. I don't, whatever. Long story short, it gets bright in my room most times, especially since I sleep until like noon. So I usually sleep with eye masks, but they're usually like tight to my head or they have like a lot of Velcro on the back, which like catches in my hair because I sleep with my hair down most times. So Corey and I went to CVS at like two in the morning once after a poetry slam and we found this. It looks like a regular sleeping mask, but it's a bra for your eyes. <laughs> And so it has like these little hollow parts for like, you can, you can open your eyes, blink in them, no problem. You can't see what I'm doing. Why am I doing this? So it's just really comfortable and it doesn't crunch your eyes or anything. So you can have the Velcro, which is not that much. I can have that all the way without it like crunching my eyes and stuff. Cause I don't mind it being on my head, like not tight, but snugly. It normally just hurts my eyes, but this doesn't because it's a bra for your eyes. <laughs> just love this Corey got one too. And I'm going to continue with the weird random things. And this is this is a little gross looking, so excuse it. Um, I paint my nails often, like two to three times a week sometimes. If I have a really good long lasting nail polish, you know, once a week. But I've been trying out new things that aren't lasting as long. Anyway, I, I hate taking off glitter polishes, but I've really liked the look of them. Um, and I like doing like the ombre glitter thing and it's just a bitch to get them off and I don't have patience to do the acetone or the cotton ball and then wrap the foil around your finger. It just, I don't, I'm not into that. So I was browsing CVS one day and I ran across this. It, I thought was just like a little uh, tub of acetone, which is basically really, really strong nail polish remover. It's what they use at the salons. That's how they get your nail polish off really quickly in case you don't know. But when you open it, let's see if I have enough. It kind of looks like that. It, lo it looks like an angry vagina. It looks like an evil vagina. That's what it looks like. It has like all these little s Ooh! You just pour a new acetone in there or a new nail polish remover, whatever you prefer, I guess, and it scrapes off your polish. Unless you know me in my personal life, you probably don't know how obsessed I am with perfumes. And a couple of them are room oils, because what I would do, like the oils from Bath & Body Works, I'd put like a drop of uh, two different ones on my wrist and I'd rub it together. That was my perfume like all through high school. That's all I did. I really do love perfumes and I got this one as a gift and this is the uh, Tokyo Milk Dark Tainted Love et La Parfum. That was like a Spanish twist on a French something. I don't know. I really love this. I've been wearing it almost every day. I have a couple other perfumes that I also got for my birthday and yeah, I just, I'm very into perfumes. I've been wearing this one a lot just because it's really uh, spicy and a, a little... Um, peppery. It is, oh, dark vanilla bean, orchid, white tea, sandalwood. Yes, definitely, definitely sandalwood. And yeah, it's like spicy. 
Now this next movie actually just <laughs> bought for myself. I really liked it. Megan and I rented it from Redbox. It is What If... Oh, I need to take the plastic off that. Sorry. I never watched Harry Potter, so I don't have like this, um, I don't know, nostalgia attached to the guy. But I've seen him in Horns, and I actually quite liked that. It was different than what I thought it would be. And I, we rented this kind of, not with really high expectations, and maybe that's why I love it so much. I don't know. I thought it was so, so witty. It, I, I watch rom-coms mostly to mock them, not for like their actual quality of being a good movie. And I just, I loved this. It was really, really, really smart and witty. Yeah, and it says refreshingly funny and romantic. Completely agree with that. Just whoever wrote this movie, I, I forget who it was, but I looked them up and I said, I want to watch every movie they ever wrote for. Same, just, and the directing of it and just, oh, all of it. So, so good. Highly recommend it. It's in Redbox's go and rent it. You won't regret it. It's like, what, a buck to rent from Redbox or something? Under five dollars at least? Like, go rent it. You won't be sorry. Now this next one I have a really sentimental attachment for. Um, I watched this as a kid and it's a movie you probably really should not watch as a child. Back when Blockbuster was a thing, there was this place called Hollywood Video, which is like a knockoff of a Blockbuster. And when I went to my mom's house on the weekends, she would take my brother and I and we would always rent like the same two movies. My brother would always rent Willow and I would always rent White or Leander. And we rented it so much that the guy there would go every weekend. Um, the, the cashier would say, you can just buy them for like a lot cheaper. And so I went and I found a copy and we bought it for like eight bucks. So I watched this movie so much and I've actually started reading the book only happened like two days ago, hence why it's not my favorites yet, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to storm through and finish it by next month. I don't know, this is kind of a hard one to give a summary for, especially if you don't want spoilers, which I try to not spoil things. A major event happens early on that is, I would say, a big spoiler, but it's really where the rest of the movie um, falls into place after. It's all because of this event. This is about a mother and a daughter's relationship, and her daughter Astrid is very impressionable. Ingrid, portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer, um, she's a very self-centered woman. She cares about beauty and her art and she, beauty is her religion. It is her um, way that she lives her life. If you can't do something beautiful, you just don't exist to her. And her mother is very dangerous and uh, because of an event that happens, Astrid now has to circulate through these really bad and sometimes really good situations that end badly and she just leads a really rough life because of her mother. But it's not in this blaming way. She still has this extraordinary love and want for acceptance. She just loves her mother and you really feel that and I don't know, I connected with it in a really deep way. Um, I think especially because of the point in my childhood in which I watched this without getting into personal stuff. But yeah, I really connected to Astrid and I, I more than empathized with her and I just I have this absurd love for this movie and yeah I will forever hold that place in my heart and I forgot it existed for the longest time but I went through my DVD collection and I had this and I thought oh I remember and I was just flooded with these emotions I remember this movie so vividly and yeah I just I have this really great attachment to it and it makes me mad that I even made a move uh, a video about my favorite movies without thinking that hard and I kind of want to delete it and try it again, but oh, we'll just see. So now on to my Netflix favorites. Those are my movie favorites that I did not announce to you. So I have watched two things this month. I have watched mostly this, actually 99.9% .9 this, Supernatural. I'm on to season six and I'm pissed. I'm not going to even go into things for those who may want to watch it or are currently watching it. But yeah, season six, beginning of that, I am just so mad and suspicious of everything. And yes, I'm mad. I'm very mad. But um, I enjoyed the hell out of season five. I actually quite liked it a lot more than season four. But uh, yeah, I've been pretty much living and breathing supernatural. I <laughs> went through like two seasons in a month. No, wait, this is the end of January. I <laughs> That's embarrassing. I have no social life, you guys. I went through six, five seasons, starting the six. Yeah, so five seasons since after Christmas. It's been less than a month that I've gone through five seasons. It's the it's the 28th today. I, that is embarrassing. And moving on from that, um, I watched The Fall. This has uh, Jamie Dornan in it. I started watching it a while back because uh, he was announced to be Christian Grey and I was just like, I just, I want to see if the guy can even act because I'll probably end up seeing the movie. I'm, 
I just am not excited for it really. Truthfully, honestly, I don't really have a big desire to see it. It's more like I'm just curious to see it anyway. It is really, 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 really dark, okay? Really dark. Um, it is about a man who murders women and you see it all from his perspective, but it also has, oh, what's her name? Jillian something. He's uh, the detective that's kind of going after him and putting all the pieces together. And you're also rooting for her. And this is really twisted tug of war of what you actually want to happen, what you know should happen. And I find that the most interesting aspect of it. But uh, yeah, it's really brutal. Uh, made me paranoid as shit when I lived alone. I'm kind of glad that I watched the second season here. It was a really short season, which I was disappointed by. I didn't really love it, love it, but I was interested enough to watch it all in like one night. So that says something. And I watched Almost Famous. I have it on my DVD shelf all the way over there, I'm not getting up. But uh, I actually watched it at the end of last month. I don't think I added it in my favorites, but I added it in my 2014 favorites uh, about this boy who's very, very into music and he's working for, well, he is working for the Rolling Stone. He goes on tour with this band called Stillwater. It is semi-autobiographical, mostly semi. And so he becomes friends with these people and he travels with them. And it's just, it's, it creates such a mood. And that is what I love the most about it. And it's probably in my top, I gotta stop saying that, but it's probably in my top, I'm gonna make it a more broad thing. I'll say my top 30 or so favorite movies. I think I gave a better description of it in my 2014 favorites. My music favorites, very quickly, I've been listening to a lot of classic rock. I've been listening to like Sympathy for the Devil, Hotel California, that kind of vibe. And I've also just obsessively been listening to Hoosier. Uh, Cherry Wine, mm, Angel of Small Death and Codeine, Jackie and Wilson, and My Love Can Never Die. Those have been my, my go-to listens. I say it quickly just because I feel like they're the same every month and it's kind of boring. So yeah, that is all I've done this month. A lot of TV watching and school going to. My alarm keeps going off because I have to go and leave to tutor someone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you later next time on Bookworms Talk. Be sure to check out my poetry favorites because I am actually doing that this month. I know, finally. Uh, I usually just cram them in at the end of these videos, but I feel like this is long enough, so I'm gonna make this into a separate video. So I'll see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Later! What was that? I don't know. Bye, guys. What else did I watch this month? I rewatched Deeper's Creepers like twice. No, go back! <laughs>